Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming this morning. Saw so many people uh, jumping in early. Really appreciate that you'd like to connect up with us. Welcome to our Sunday virtual service for the Journey Within Spiritualist Church. I'm Elizabeth Fracalosi, Minister with the Journey Within, and today we have our own Pastor Joe Scheel. For I know most of you know that he is a wonderful medium, talented spirit artist, tutor, and captain of our ship. So we welcome Joe this morning. We begin our services with spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is normally a laying on of hands in prayer to be used in conjunction with, never instead of, medical practice or advice. As we are meeting virtually, our healers that are present will be sending healing to all of you here and to those we are requesting prayers for. We are grateful, so grateful for our volunteer healers who are with us today and for their dedication as healers and the healing they do week in and week out for all of you and for all of us through the journey. If you'd like to request healing for someone, please put their first name and last initial in the chat box. These names will be forwarded to our healers for absentee healing. Last initial is for privacy, please. Or you can do S family, Q family, um, spirit and God knows who it's going to. You may also call the church or email us if there is anyone during the course of the week you'd like to request healing for, including your pets, the planet, or global circumstances. If you do attend any more of our services, uh, the tonight or Wednesday, you do not have to put the same names in again. I promise you they're being taken care of. We will open with prayer followed by a period of quiet meditation for the healing portion. If you would like to participate in the healing, please quiet yourself now. Focus on your breathing, and as you inhale, feel yourself boosting your own immune system, igniting the inner healer within. Please join me in prayer. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from our minds and bodies and to restore us to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. As I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health, I put my trust in the love and the power of God. Amen. As we come to the end of healing, we will continue to remember and pray for those who are suffering and who are in need of healing. Amen. I would now like to invite Pastor Joe to open the service with prayer, followed by song. Good morning, everybody, and welcome and thank you. How good it is for all of us to be here today and to uh, spend some time together in contemplation and in, and in love together. If you'd help me uh, just by being silent and contemplating the words of this prayer. O oh, great spirit, great God, Holy Spirit, we ask you to be down upon us, in us, and through us in every way, to pierce our hearts and souls with the love that you are, to help awaken us to the world of spirit, to the world of love. When we are so distracted every day by the things that go on, by all those things that are on the news and people suffering everywhere, it's hard to keep strength or courage for the future for how long we can actually deal with it all but this morning i ask all of us to take a warm moment within our own hearts to think of all the things we love to think of all the wonderful things that have happened to us even in the midst of storms and dangers and sickness and in strife you are loved very very much and that all of this will come to understanding and come to be known in time. Today, I ask you to breathe. Breathe in new life. Vita Nova, the new life, the new effort, a new understanding, a new paradigm, a new 
place to parry ourselves through, to calm ourselves so that we can see the bigger picture, so that we can relax within our life, so we can move forward with great intellect, great understanding and intelligence, and a peace in our own hearts. Amen. I'd like to introduce, yet again, our pastor, Joe Shield, for our address this morning. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And thank you for that song. It's great. I didn't know you were going to play that, but it's upbeat. It's good. I like it. Coming into a, a new day here. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here. I thought that I would talk to you this morning about something um, that kind of dawned on me this week um, with a little bit of my own tra minor tragedies, if you will. Um, I have I went to look for a new vehicle because mine is um, not well. How's that? And so I'm not going to go into the details of all of that. But um, I'm I drive a pickup truck. You know, I'm a big guy. I have a I have a house out in the country, and and uh, I need the four wheel drive and the high the high truck off the ground and all that. So that's what I do. It's comfortable for me. It's uh, I call it my living room on wheels. How's that? I just kind of drive around, but um, but it's not well. So I um, ventured out to dealerships to look at new vehicles, and I had several people trying to talk me into getting an electric vehicle. An electric truck, a matter of fact. Um, and um, my son's very into it, and a lot of the young people are understand it better than I do. But uh, being my age, I I don't know any difference. So I wanted to learn, and I I took the time. And and so as I got closer and closer to understanding these vehicles, which are beautiful and drive like a dream, and I have nothing to say that's wrong about them, other than the fact that um, they introduced a new term to me, which I thought was quite interesting. And then I realized it's actually real. It's an actual uh, real term in new in um, psychology, if you will, and it's called range anxiety. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, people have a fear of where are they going to charge up the car? How are they going to get to one place to another without running out of energy? in the car the battery's going to go dead you're like an old flashlight hanging out in the, hanging out at the edge of the road you know nothing's gonna go and people have like how do you get to one place to another how long does it take to charge it up what's going to happen to me you know what's going to and i started to think about all those things and i started to get range anxiety best very much about playing any car like that because i'm always on the go um, my vehicle is two and a half years old and has 96,000 miles on it. So it shows you how much I travel, how much I go. And um, it's quite a quite an ordeal to uh, try to try to figure out where am I going with this next vehicle if I get another one. So I thought about, wow, isn't that interesting? I don't know why this term hasn't come up before in the rest of our lives, you know. What's the range we can go? How far can we go with something before we get anxious, before things fall apart, before things come to a change or a, a, a right hand or a left hand turn in our life to take us right off the road? How far can we go with all kinds of things in our life? You know, say relationships, you know, we, we fall in love and we say, oh, this is going to be forever and I'll be with you for the, until the end of time. And then we start to doubt that many, many people do. Some people make it for many years are told death do us part and all the rest. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know the range of how long I can do this, how I can do that. People get sick and they go to the hospital and they're told that they have an illness that, oh, well, you know, we're not sure. And before you know it, because we don't, we're in the unknown, we don't know the range of time we have. We don't know the range of recovery. We don't, we have kind of a, an idea, but where's the next stop? Where's the next relief? Where's the next recharge, if you will, to kind of come together? And part of this range anxiety is because in the electric world or the electric car world, if you will, there's not enough infrastructure. And people say, well, there is enough. It's getting better all the time. 
But meanwhile, there's this week ahead of you or this day ahead of you. And is the range enough? Will it be enough? So the anxiety builds because the inside or the in infrastructure isn't well. It doesn't work completely. It's It's got flaws and holes in the infrastructure where the, there's long distances where there's nothing to tie into or to recharge oneself, okay, of one's own vehicle. Well, it's the same thing with, with relationships. It's the same thing with, with life itself. How long of a range of life do we have? The doctors will tell us, you know, the average age of, 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 of the average time death for, you know, an, a, an American male or a European male or whatever, the, or the same for women. And, and we can look at that range and we can say, well, our minds say, well, I can beat that. I can live longer than that. I'll, I'll take care of myself. I'll go vegan. I'll do something, you know, and all of us do it. All of us do that, you know, um, with me, I, I can't even count the number of diets that I've tried. Um, and I, I'm still a big, you know, still a big guy. So I keep going and I keep, you know, going along. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I've had injuries over the years and, uh, and construction and football, all kinds of things that I used to play. And, and so how long is this going to take before I can walk again or before I can move again or before this wound will heal? And they give me a range. And I see, oh, how can I endure that range? Where am I going to go with it all? And there's all kinds of those things. How much pain will I have and how much, how long will it be before I can have the relief or be recharged in my life? So this new thing, this new term, range anxiety, I don't think there's anything new. I think it's been around a long, long time with every issue in my life. You know, what's the range of my money in the bank? How long could I retire for? How long could I go without the job? How long could I go to really do that? How long is it going to take to come around? Or if I take this particular position in this company, how long before I get promoted? How long before I really start to be successful? You know, I'm a sailor for a long time in my life. And, and you have to think about it and plan as you take a trip on a sailboat, you have to think of the range that you're going. And there's all kinds of unknowns in the middle of it all. You may say, well, you know, it'll take us 12 hours to get to the next destination, to, but we want to be off the ocean or off the lake and into that port by then. And so you calculate the range, you calculate what you need, you you're intelligent and you do the best you can. You get out there and you sail like crazy, and try to, and you might be comfortable with it, but then all of a sudden a storm comes up or something else happens or someone else is in, in trouble. So you have to go and rescue them or, and things in life happen sometimes almost without reason, it seems. And it blocks us or slows us down or stops us dead in our, in our tracks. And then what's our range? That range that was planned in the first place doesn't quite work out, doesn't quite go the way we hoped it would. So a range anxiety has been around a long time with a lot of different things in life. You know, how, how far will our kids go in school? What's the range of their abilities or their aptitude or their, their patience with things? What's our range of patience with other people? How long can I be patient with something before I snap or before I want to, you know, get down to brass tacks and have it done, you know? How many of these things in our life do we really look at and say, what's our range? The problem with all of those things in our life is, is the infrastructure. Where do we recharge? so that we can get further, so we can do what is needed, so we can complete what is done without the anxiety, without the frustration, without the fear. The infrastructure is what's necessary. And we, each of us, has an opportunity in our lives to rebuild the infrastructure, which is us and our faith. How faithful are you that everything is going to be okay? that this life is important, and no matter what happens, that love is in our hearts, that love is all around us, that spirit is beyond us, that there is life beyond this, that it's, it's not an ending. 
but always constant new beginnings, maybe new challenges, maybe new hassles. But the fact of the matter is God is with us all the time. What is the range of our faith in life? That fantastic adventure in trusting a higher source. That fantastic adventure in trusting our higher self, which is our infrastructure, our soul search, our soul wonderment. No matter what religion you may have come from or whether you grew up in spiritualism itself, I took this on first as I was sitting there waiting for things in the, in the auto dealership or whatever, thinking about spiritualism, thinking about the job I've taken on here at Journey Within. What's the longevity? What's the range? How are we going to do this? And I thought because of my conversations with other pastors around the country of spiritualism, we're such a new religion that we need to see the range. And where's the recharging of that range? Having everything solid, having everything in place that we can count on or lean on or walk upon to keep us upright and keep us solid is very, very important in all our churches, which means our principles. Our principles need to be understood completely to its depths so that we have the, the strength and the engine and all of that to carry us forward, to get as far as we can. But beyond all that, even if we've got that down, we've got to pass that on. We've got to bring it to new people. We've got to have younger people in our religion. The history of spiritualism is mostly middle-aged people starting to get frustrated with a religion of before or with their own lives or they've gone through a divorce or something like that. And it's just, it's rocked their world or they've lost somebody in their life and, you know, uh, the other minister or priest or rabbi or something didn't handle the funeral well or something. And the frustration comes and their range of patience with that is gone. It's out. They need to be recharged. So they find something new. They trade it in, if you will, and they want to come and have a new way of doing things. And they enter spirit spiritualism, which is the religion of the future. But what's our infrastructure? Okay, our infrastructure is really bringing upon ministers that understand what we're talking about, understand the philosophy of spiritualism, the science and the commitment to scientific explanations and questioning as we go, constantly trying to refine and, and understand completely that relationship with the spirit world and God. And a religion, a faith of people, that we are of open-minded people, not so much like-minded, but all open-minded, willing to investigate, willing to take the time, willing to have the endurance to do what is necessary to bring this, bring it forward, and the ability to teach those who are younger and show them the benefit of spiritualism in this world. I believe spiritualism has a better chance and a longer range of bringing peace to this world more than any other religion that holds us down, puts us in doctrines, puts us in creeds, and tells us, do it our way or the highway. That's not us. We are of love. We are of understanding and taking personal responsibility for the future, for our own and for those children to come, those young folks really willing to come forward and really you're refining some of the things that need to be refined, writing about their experiences, showing their experiences in evidential ways so that we see the truth of God, the truth of all that is good. I think spiritualism could have a great range, but we need the infrastructure. First, starting with our own, each and every one of us, What's our range of faith? Is it short and, and impatient and intolerant? Or do we really trust God and trust spirit to show us the way, even in the darkest of times, even in loss of loved ones or loss of jobs or loss of homes? Do we trust 
that if we keep it clear and keep with God and have us led by someone greater than ourselves, do we have the trust that we'll go forward and be okay? Yeah, when it comes to my truck, I've got range anxiety. When it comes to spiritualism, I have a little bit of range anxiety. But when it comes to seeing the truth and the love in all those who come to church or all those who come to these, these sessions on, you know, these church sessions online and seeing the people reach forward, reach for more, reach for understanding and reach to help each other, my anxiety lessens a little bit. I have a lot more peace. But when I take a contemplative moment in my life every day, once a week, when I take some time to contemplate, to contemplate, not just study in my navel, you know, in meditation, but to actually think, how am I doing with my faith today? How am I doing, God? Can you walk with me, talk with me? Can you be with me? Can you hold me through this? Can you carry me? I will work with others. I will pray with others. I will help others. I will lend a hand. I will be courteous, kind, and understanding. I will be patient. I will be tolerant. But man, could you just get me to the next station so I can charge up again? Could you charge me now so I can reach the distance that love requires? Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you, Joe. Beautiful, inspiring words, in my opinion. But thank you, everyone, with uh, all the emojis in support of that. <laughs> I do not have emoji anxiety. We can have more. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. As always. Yeah. And we shift gears from those beautiful words to come time for our collection and announcements. There is a scan box for donations for your convenience, should you so choose. And we appreciate all donations, great or small. You may also send in a donation or visit the church website if you are so moved. Divine and loving spirit, you have blessed us with our home. We ask you to bring us the means to keep it alive and growing. We give thanks to all the gifts given. Amen. And come time for our announcements. If you are in the area of the journey, you may drop food for the local pantry at the door of the church. No glass, no perishable foods, please. And please consider becoming a member of our community. We are continually growing and we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And for online upcoming events and classes, the first and third Wednesdays of the month, a community meditation with Eugenia Bushman. March 3rd and 10th, the Confidence Clinic with Pamela Meredith. March 6th, the Spiritual Assessment Workshop with Simone Key. And March 8th, Understanding and Delivering a Spiritual Address with Christine Morgan. March 11th, Demonstration of Mediumship with the Journey Within Advanced Students. March 14th, Being a Pets Medium with Lillian Steiner. March 15th, Demonstration of Mediumship with Pastor Joe, Bonnie Grossman, and Laura Wooster. That's going to be beautiful. And March 16th, Edgar Casey on Family Karma with Kevin Tedeschi. In person at The Journey Within, first and third Sundays of each month, mediumship development classes, all levels with Pastor Joe and guest tutors, and that's at 12 p.m. noon. Um, the next date is March 3rd. Today, February 25th, 12 p.m., the heart bath for better mediumship with Pamela Meredith. That'll be downstairs and also upstairs We in, in the sanctuary. A demonstration of mediumship with Pastor Joe and Journey Within Mediums. Please join us for Sunday morning live at 10 a.m. if you are able, and Wednesday nights at 7.30 for our healing and messages service, and our Sunday evening service this evening, should you so choose to uh, join us there as well, that's at 6.30, that's our student service. 
We are constantly updating our website with new classes and events. Please look there for the most up-to-date information. And also, if you attend the Journey Within and you are in the area, please always check if we have crazy weather sometimes to make sure that we're there. Um, hopefully, we're not going to have any more snow. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I would like to thank all our volunteers at this time. Through our volunteers, the journey and our community continue to thrive. Thank you each and every one of you. We now come time for our demonstration of mediumship. As a spiritualist church, we believe life is continuous. And through our demonstration of mediumship, we seek to reunite you here with those have crossed over, your people who have crossed over. If you can take 90 to 100% of the evidence, we would ask you to please raise your hand. And if you'd like, please find the reactions and the raise and lower hand. If you'd like to practice that, please, you can do that right now. Wonderful, that way you can find it if you need it. And then if we practice lowering our hands as well. Okay, you can lower the hands. There we go. Okay. Um, lowering the hands, this is important too, because if you can't take the subsequent pieces of evidence, we would ask you to please lower your hand if you've raised it and you don't understand the rest of it. So um, Joe can come to the person it's more quickly. Um, if several people can take the information, it is up to Joe um, or uh, to discern the right recipient. So please listen up and please follow what he says. Okay. If you were invited to speak, please then unmute yourself and come in with voice. If for some reason, this is, we always say this and we don't want this to happen. If you are invited to speak and for some reason you can't unmute, please type in the chat box and we will work it from there. We don't want that to happen. We're not putting that, the intention is Zoom will work beautifully, <laughs> okay? So um, that's, that's the only reason we'd need you to type in the chat box at that time. So now we will have song and the, followed by the message prayer in preparation for the demonstration. So at this time, please think of your loved ones and ask them to come close. Please join me in the message prayer. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I now like to invite Pastor Joe to offer the demonstration of mediumship. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm going to try to move my camera here. So I'm going to shut off your music. So remind me to put you back on again afterwards, okay? A uh, little technical issues here. Okay. Now, I don't know what you're going to see because I just tried adjusting the camera and I probably screwed it all up here. So, yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't know if I can bring it over here. That's my. Okay. There. So I'm going to be sitting off to the side a little bit. You may not be able to see me very well. But um, Elizabeth, if you can help me with the hands and things to go up, I, I'd really appreciate yes. that. Um, now, please pay attention to the information uh, more so than the drawing. The drawing may come together in time, so we'll, we'll try to place that where you can see it so you can see it come together. I may talk about one person and draw a different one in the same family, and that happens a lot. If you look at the background behind me on the other picture, that's a, that's a multiple drawing. So that's those are drawings I do with 25 family members, and so it comes in kind of what my mind, inside my mind looks like, I guess. Everybody says, is that heaven? I said, I don't think so. I think that's my screwy mind, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, um, let me just say a short prayer and we'll begin. 
Mighty God, Holy Spirit, be down upon us and us and through us in every way. I thank you for bringing everybody together today. I ask you to surround us with the white light of your love and to pierce our hearts and souls with that love. And as you do, I ask the Holy Spirit, be with us at all possible, especially those around about the folks here today. And as you step in with me, as you use me in any way you wish, as long as you do it, love, light, and respect. Please show yourself to me. Help me understand who you are, what you like in life, what you didn't like, what happened to you. Any information you have for the folks here for their upliftment, the discernment of their well-being, the purpose, their path, their happiness, and joy will be appreciated. And I ask this in the name of all of us, holy, of the angels, saints, teachers, guys, loved ones, and prophets who have come before us to pave the way. And I ask this day for nothing but your highest and best of peace, patience, and tolerance, your insight, well-being, and strength, your fortitude, your love, your light, but especially your truth. Amen. So that's a prayer I say before every reading. And I say today for all of you. I'm going to um, begin with a woman that's kind of been, um, well, I I want to say hounding me, but really not so much. But I, I say that because I smell, a, I smell a dog in the background. I smell a wet dog. And I'm trying to see this dog that's kind of mid-sized. It's not a little bitty thing. It's kind of but I don't speak dogs, so I, I'm, but I'm going to say I do see it in the background. It is a, it is a, it's got a bit of hair to it. It's not like a, you know, hairless type of dog. It's got some heavy fur to it. So as I'm talking about that, this woman is with me and um, she is with or has received this dog on the other side since she's been there. And so she wants to talk about that. I like her a lot. I think she could have had a little bit more life, but she is up in years. She's older than I am, and I'm 68, so I'm going to say she's she's uh, a bit older than I am. I do think she had a cancer towards the end. There's a lot of, um, she had beaten a, one before this, but this is a little different and monasticized and went a little deeper, if you will. I do feel like there's um, some lung issues with her that are very, very heavy, especially in my left lung. So I do, th I do think this may have some heart issues with, with her as well. Um, and that's what I'm feeling off the bat with her. However, as I ask her to let me know more about her life other than her sickness, I'm going to I'm going to can go a little bit further here. I'm going to say 78 is in my mind, 78. So I, I'm going to say those two numbers here. And as I come closer to her, I I, I do want to mention an Evelyn or Eve. And I also want to mention... Uh, around her somehow. I also want to mention that there is a J Julie or J Judith or something like that. I want to say Julie, but it could be June. I walked right over myself, but I'm going to mention that as well around her. Now, as I begin to see her and ask her to come close to me, She's a lovely woman. I think she was quite attractive when she was younger. She showed me a younger picture. I do think she was married because it looks like a wedding picture, if you will, that may still be around. I also want to say to you, as, as if you were to understand this, you would understand her kindness and her fortitude, but she was stood up for herself. She did have a voice and she, she wasn't a, the wallflower that would fade away. She would speak her mind when she had to, and she was strong in that way. I don't think life was absolutely a piece of cake for her or handed to her on a silver platter. I do think she, she struggled a bit in life. So I'm going to just begin to draw this woman that I'm seeing. And I hope that you can um, appreciate her. I, I do think that she would have, she would have, um, she would have been very kind to a lot of people. She would have had a lot of uh, effort to, uh, to love people and to give them the best of her, if you will. And I, I'm just going to mention that as I, as I come through here. So I'm going to change pencils here so I can get a little bit of a... She seems to take care of herself. She's not frumpy. She's not, you know, kind of losing her grip or anything. She seems to have herself together. And I do think that as hard as life was, um, she, she kept it together. I, I don't feel her, like, slipping off the edge here. Um, I do think she would have liked to have more life, and there's definitely um, a mention of children around. So I think she had some grandchildren before she left, and that's also part of the evidence of where where we're at with her. Um, is there any hands up yet, Elizabeth? We have one hand. We have Sheila. I'm bringing okay. her in. Yes. Can I speak with Sheila, please? Hi there. Good morning. 
Good morning, Sheila. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How about good. you? Good. I can't see you, but that's okay, okay? I just need yeah. to see your voice, if you don't mind. Sure. And um, I'm going to say that this woman is showing me a younger picture of herself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I guess there's, there might be a little vanity there. <laughs> 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 she liked to look her best so i'm going to mention that but she shows me this this wonderful head of hair that she had and um that she really treated it well it mm -hmm. it did get she even kept it well into her age i want to say uh even though it was at times you know a lot of work if you will mm -hmm. uh, and and she liked to have other people play with it or take care of it if you will okay she okay. loved she loved music. She almost hummed along with music I, I, quite a bit. Um, and so when she was feeling good, you would hear her humming songs, kind of, you know, she's kind of very um, attuned to that. Yeah. You'd understand all this, wouldn't you? I do. This okay, which, can I ask you to just repeat back to me that which you do understand, you know, just just... Feed back to me what I've said to you. Don't try not to elaborate, okay? Okay. So starting kind of earlier, her name was Eleanor. Uh -huh. um, she um, would have received our dog. Um, she wow. had grandchildren. Um, she had children, obviously, then. Yeah. Um, she was absolutely the most kind-hearted woman but mm -hmm. she was also had a tough side to her yeah um but it was through her life circumstance that kind of happened um she was very beautiful as a young woman mm -hmm. she did die of liver cancer um yeah it comes to me like that it, um where she she suffered for a almost a year and a half with that correct so she had diabetes that had struck and okay. so she was kind of struggling with some things all right but i i want to say that i think she was sick and it got worse towards the last two months but yes. before that that she yes. was quite ill for you know kind of getting treatments and doing yes. almost she said 16 months so i'm just going to say that okay yeah um I do think she left a number of people behind. And um, I do think that she, there's a daughter here or still here in the world, correct? Um, there would be just daughter-in-laws. Daughter-in-laws, okay. And granddaughters. And what, I'm sorry? And granddaughters. Granddaughters, okay. Can I just... Who is Anne or Ashley or uh, that's like. Um, and so she had this very close friend okay. who I think is the, I can't, it's not coming to me. That was the Jude name that you were saying, Judith okay. something. Judith. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Anne, I think is the woman who actually, cause her name was Anne that raised her. Okay because there's a lot of uh, appreciation for that around yeah. her yeah. almost prayers for that because um it's not a it's not a malice type of thing it's not a, a contentious relationship it's a very loving and caring yeah. for that woman do you understand i do a thankfulness if you will for her and her life and for you as well so it seems to be that she wants you to know she's thankful for you to be here today and to and to take this message if you will she said that you have been concerned health wise and things like that, but she's saying, I'm with you always. Mm -hmm. So no worries. Okay. Yeah. Is that true? Would you understand that? I do. Okay. So know that that, that she's somebody to put right in your court there. <laughs> <But that's>, okay. Because <laughs> I think I she, talked to her. <laughs> good. She's she's lovely. I, I do think she had a strong faith as well, but she's not evangelizing people. She's not throwing them you know, into uh, into her faith, if you will. She just she's a power of example in the way she handled herself. Yes. And I do want to mention that as well. Okay. Yes. Um, but I also speak to you of uh, 
she has this she has this dog with her and she said that it's 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 almost like a new a newness to her a new thing to take care of if you will so there's more than one is yes. what she's trying to express to me yes and that she's kind of took on the took on the role of of caregiver for them okay <laughs> or just Very and much. i think i think the love that's there between them is like there's nothing more to care about except to care about each other and and uh that seems to be quite strong why do I want to oh, talk Karen. about either Worcester or Rochester or something like what? What is? Could I ask Mass you about that? Massachusetts. Please? Yes, I believe w Worcester, Massachusetts. Is that what yeah. we're talking about? Yes. yes. Why is that coming to my mind here? So I have a connection to that area with a very good friend. Okay. And it's. Uh, I hear borough. Is there a say that? I hear borough, like like North Borough, something like that. I I'm gonna just mention that, okay? Okay. Um, and I feel that she was not ostentatious. She didn't she didn't have a lot of things that were expensive or things like that. She liked. She had a couple of things that she enjoyed and loved quite quite a bit, sure. but. Very true. Um, she didn't she didn't go spending outrageously and she, i have i have her. one of the things that she had gotten okay and i do feel i do feel like the kindness within her of giving things away before she even passed was yeah. was quite generous as well correct yes so she was i'm very generous that way it, yeah, and she gave of her time as well. Like if you called her to take you somewhere, things like that, she'd be the one to jump in the car and go, you know. Yep. Um, and pick something up at the store. That she, she just those little kindnesses just show a lot of strength in who she is as a person. Yeah. And I, I want to mention the name Aaron. Aaron. I, I know you don't know where it is right now, okay? I know you don't okay. know that. But I want to look towards a a um a son. Mm -hmm. uh, and is there a Michael? Um, say no. It's okay to say no to me. No, I'm trying to think of so there's a Michael that would have been raised with her, kind of like a brother at this woman's. Okay. I want to look there in okay. that part of the family for an Aaron. I believe okay. it's a woman's name, not a male's name. Okay. Okay. Although it could be used either way. I think it's more female feeling to me. Like there's some concern there that someone that she's praying for, but actually it feels like the, this is good stuff. This is, Aaron is like achieving things, going forward, helping others. Okay. You know? And so it's a celebration is what I'm feeling more than anything. Okay. Yes. And September seems to be important with the two of you somehow. Why is that? I want to go to there. There must be a story around September. Uh, I want to say the middle of September, more around like the 13th or 14th of so, September. So that's when her ashes were put out to sea. Okay. Then I want to give you the thank you for helping with all that and being being so reverent during that time to her and to others, being patient with people as well. Yep. You really helped it all go peacefully oh. and in the midst of some storms out there and i'm not talking necessarily <laughs> ocean storms i'm talking I, about people storms you know i, I get it <laughs> okay, you get great. it all right and i okay. had hurt myself but made sure that i was there and to be a support well she's very very thankful for that and do you recognize the picture i do as her a, a little, little younger, little younger, her really young when she kept yeah. her hair, she yeah. wanted her hair longer. So that's <laughs> and that makes sense. That's right? totally okay. right. <laughs> okay, good. 
All right. Well, I'll leave you with that with light and love. Thank you very much for taking it. And, Thank you. And what is your name again? It is Sheila. Sheila. Um, I should know that. It's like my last name. Too. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, um, I don't know if you know how to take a picture of this. I am. You can right now, if you can. I am. I'm doing it right now. And if not, we can we can uh, Got it. do something. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank All you right. so God much. Bless. God bless. All right. In a moment. I just had the name Ralph in my head. I'm going to talk about Ralph. He has this kind of, it's a, it, his name sounds like his attitude almost, you know, it's like Ralph. Um, but I feel like this is a, a, a man who is older. When he passed, um, he talks about reaching 80. So I'm going to say 80. Um, I do believe there's lung issues with him. He smoked for a long time in his life. Um, I want to say that there's a, a, a pack of Raleigh, so they used to have the sticker on the back. Um, so I think that was early on in his smoking days. He used to give those stickers to somebody else to, to they go like grain stamps almost or something. That's weird. But anyway, I'm going to say that's not what he smoked forever, but it was at one time something he collected or first. And he actually says it was for somebody else. So I'm going to mention that. I feel that that name is around this man that I'm seeing and looking at right now. He's a strong character. I do believe that he would have spoken his mind. He was tough around the edges, not necessarily always. He could be friendly. He could be open. He could be warm. He could be just uh, genuinely uh, giving of himself. He loved kids, but he didn't necessarily like people that were needy you know, and uh, that that had the ability to be uh, do for themselves, but they would complain or whine. And uh, he didn't do well with that at all. Um, and he says, they're not stupid. They're just trying to get get a, get over. He didn't like people who tried to get over, get one over on them, if you will. Um, and he said, and that was the frustration, frustrating part of his life, of his job. Um, he talks about newspapers that, and almost like being sad that newspapers are gone. They're not as abundant as they used because he liked to get the paper every day. I'm not, I'm wondering why he wants the paper every day, but I do think he read it, you know, and, and held, held it with him for quite a while. I feel like this gentleman may have been up in the Northeast at one point in time um, because I, I saw him with a heavy coat on. Uh, and then he took it off. So, but I, but he had a heavy, longer coat, almost like a knee length um, overcoat, if you will. And um, I do believe he wore a hat at one point in time as well. It looks like a fedora or so, that kind of a hat. Um, but he shows me different hats. So he liked hats, and he had a collection of different types. He has a you know like the little uh, scully cap and and a few other things. So I'm I'm saying he's the kind of man that would have put one on that doesn't mean he's bald because i don't think he is completely bald i think i think uh as he comes closer he did did have a bit of hair still um he may have been receding a little bit but not not to the point that i am or that type of thing okay um i feel this is a genuinely good man who was a dad who uh worked hard in his life he knew numbers really well an engineering kind of a mind he knows how things work um, he, he would have been tight with money, <laughs> you know, he's like counting his change. So he is like, like my dad, we used to say it about my dad that he was so tight. He squeaked. <laughs> so this guy's got that kind of thing too. I like him a lot. A As I give him a handshake, he, 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 he firmly takes my hand. It's like he, he would have trusted a handshake, but he's not dumb enough not to get the contract signed, if you will. So, um, I feel he stands strong, but I don't feel he was well at the end. I do think he had a couple of different bouts before this actual passing time, but um, he was struggling with lung, lung issues, definitely. So can I ask, is anybody raising their hands, Elizabeth? We have three hands up. We had okay. Karen, Amy, and Caroline. Okay. So stay with me, okay? I'm going to draw here so you can 
see if I can see him better than I do here. We now have Amy and Caroline still have their hands up. Okay. So can I speak to Amy, please? We have Amy unmuting. Yes. Um, my my godfather's name was Ralph. Yeah. Um, he was from Rochester originally, but he had a Rolls Royce transmission refurbishing factory in Patterson. Okay. He smoked Collies. He saved, and he smoked some real expensive cigarettes in a flat box with stickers. Right. That he they used come to with a, yeah. Okay. Yep. And he was um, a master mechanic. Um, he was very, very kind, but he really hated slackers. Um, he, he really would. He would fire a slacker like off. Give him one yes. chance, and that's it. Right. After lunch, because it was dangerous work. I used to do yeah. paperwork for him. Okay. But he was enormously kind, and he was a dad. He was a good dad. He, he wasn't my actual godfather. He was my friend for 50 years, but I couldn't explain my relationship with him because he looked like such a hoodlum, and he had a fedora. Well, you understand that he, he knew hoodlums, if you will. He knew gangsters, if you will, but he wasn't a gangster himself. No, but, he was a yeah. working man. Yeah. But he did but he did deal with them now and then, and he, he, didn't, he wasn't really happy about it, but he got along with them, right? Well, he had to in his business. Yeah, he had to, but where where he was and stuff, right? I mean, because yeah. of the kind of thing he dealt with as well. I get it. Okay. So we'll give that as a given. Okay. I that, I don't need to be a medium to know that. Um, but I but I I want to say he's got a he's got a kindness to him too. So I do feel like he um he really had had a lot of regard for I, I want to say he had respect for women. Yes. And back then Back then, that wasn't so much so so uh, prevalent, if you will. Okay. No, he was close to his mother. She, he was very kind to women and waitresses. Yeah, and and very. and not not in a flirtatious way, but more of no. a more of a respect way, right? He was a gentleman. Yeah, a gentleman. Not a womanizer. Right. You recognize this picture at all yet? Yes. Okay. Younger, younger. Yeah. Picture. Younger oh my God! Holy smoke! So hold hold on with me, Amy. I just want to say hello to the other person just for a second, just to say thank you. But I think I'm with you. Okay. Thank so, you. Um, who was the other person with their hand up? Other than Caroline. Amy? Caroline, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. What parts of this do you understand, Caroline? We'll just start there, I guess. Sure. Um, my father's name is Rolf, was Rolf, and he was very extremely tight financially. Yeah. Um, he would not spend money on basically anything. Um, he was initially from Germany and did have long coats, and he wore a hat to keep his head warm. Um, his job when he came to the States was... I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there. So I, I, I'm sorry to stop you. I really am. But but I, I know at this point that I'm not with you because I don't recognize your voice from within me. And I, I need to hear the person's voice has to sound like they belong to this person, like, you know, like calling your mother and your mother says hello and it, it instantly connects, if you will. And sure. it, 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 I believe that you have, I don't want, in other words, I don't want you to tell any more about this because if you're having, if you're at another demonstration at another church service, I don't want people to know that. I want you to come off and have that person come through for you. Do you understand? Yes. So thank you so much for participating and trying to help me out here. But I do think I'm with Amy and I have since the beginning and it didn't change my mind. So I'm just... I'm going to say thank you very much, and and I apologize that it's not for you, but we'll go from there. No worries, and thank right. you. Thank you, thank you. All right. So, Amy, you're still here with me, correct? Yes, sir. You got his nose exactly in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's that um, looks freaky. It it's not creepy. No, 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 freaky, <laughs> freaky good, freaky good. Oh, freaky good. Well, I, I don't know if I've ever actually heard that, 
but uh but thank I mean you. it's so exact it's so okay. his thank you well he's um he's quite a guy and um I'd be afraid to work for him because he's a stickler <laughs> you know he would have he would have wanted it the his way or the highway for sure I mean his he's just but he, he, it was that important to him to have to do the right job you know oh yes I'm gonna mention that as I go I like him a lot I'm gonna I'm gonna say I think he loves you completely. He's thanking you. He's saying that your life has been no easy picnic. And he wants you to know that he's been there every time you've been kind of wondering what's next, you know, what's going on, you know, like why me type of thing. He's saying, just have faith that I'm walking with you. You're going to be okay. And it's all going to work out. Okay. So he's going to give you a lot of love and be around you quite a bit. All right. And I'm Thank you. just going to kind of, Put these little shadows in his skin, skin here. I, I, he never took time for himself, but he had a couple of times down by the ocean where he says it was a lot of fun. So I'm seeing kind of a carnival kind of place, but um, yeah, he went to Florida yeah. late in life. He moved, he oh. had to move <laughs> actually, and he All went right. to Florida. So I, I just need to mention him and let you know with his intelligence in the spirit world, we're doing okay. All right, oh. it's going to be fine. So let him go with that, okay? Thank you so he, much. You know, his eyes are, I, I, they're black and white here in this picture, and I apologize for that, but but by the same token, I I think his, his eyes were kind of bright. They were very bright. They were bright blue, they were like, like gold. Mine? Huh? Like like gold. They were gold like on the gold. outside, and there's a little bit of, there's like a- Brown and gold. There's or something in there, too, I just got to mention, Okay. What did, I couldn't hear that, Joe. There's like a turquoise also, just like speckles. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they were extraordinary eyes. They're really, really something. Okay. Oh, well. I'm going to leave you with that with light and love. I want to say thank you so much for taking it. And um, and hopefully uh, you'll come to see him soon in your dreams. So pay attention. Okay. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Take care. That means thank everything you. to Bye. me. Okay, Elizabeth. There we go. Thank you. We'll do Let me give you blood. back the. Uh, I got to give you back the uh, thing. Yes, there. I appreciate um, that. Okay, hold on. I've got my configuration of the desk here is weird. So, okay. There we go. There we are. And then All right. Thank and you. I can get my. There we go. I'm connected back up again. So. Thank you, everyone. As we come to the end of the service, I would like to thank again everyone who worked to make this service possible. And for all of those who have attended today, thank you for being part of this beautiful community. You make us possible and uh, that love and that connection. Thank you so much. So we will close with prayer and music. I invite Pastor Joe for the closing prayer, please. Thank you. First, thank you, everybody, for being part of this service and for your your generous generosity when it comes to Journey Within and the continuation of uh, of this dream that Janet had. And um, I promise you I'll do my best. I just want to say thank you all for participating today and, and sitting in with us and sitting together and sharing the love that has been so generously given to us. I want you to know that we are here for you and that if you needed anything, let us know. Um, we want to be continue to reach out and be of help to anyone who's suffering or you know suffocating under, under the weights of life. We'll find our range and um, without the anxiety, hopefully have enough faith to go forward. So, dear God, we thank you so much today. We, all those in the spirit world, thank you so much for joining us and, and uplifting our hearts today. We ask you to be with us and walk with us and talk with us and, and be in our hearts and in our thoughts as we go about our day and about our struggles in life. And let us know how much the love can heal in everything we do. And it's going to be okay, no matter what the range. Lots of love to everybody and have a wonderful week. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We'll see you 
online next week, or if you can at the journey within have a wonderful day.